I'm Lance Yelvington for Cyber Country. Chances are, if you listen to country radio, or really any radio in the 1980s, you heard Sylvia and her beautiful voice singing the signature hit, Nobody. Well, a lot of things changed. She dropped out of the hustle for a while, but she's back. And this is a really great thing. In fact, when I first heard that she was coming back, from my perspective, I said, yay! I wanted to give her a hug in the interview, but because you don't do that right off the bat with country stars, I reconsidered. But the new stuff on her new album, It's All in the Family, actually says a lot of stuff that um, I think her fans will appreciate. The old fans will definitely appreciate and recognize the style, but her new fans will also appreciate a lot of the new stuff. Um, same great lyricist, same great songwriter. So, in this Cyber Country Minute, Sylvia is going to tell us about putting together It's All in the Family and what she's got on the horizon. Well, my life brought me back to the music. It's very interesting. I. I have uh, gone through some major life transitions in the last few years. The last year and a half I went through a divorce and uh, it kind of put my life at a, a, a space in a space where I felt like I had the opportunity to choose again. Okay, what do I want the next chapter of my life to look like? And so I, I decided to listen, listen that you know, I'm, I'm also a life and career coach, which I've trained to do in the last 16 years. That's what I've been doing when I haven't been singing as much. And uh, I've learned uh, that a great deal of the most important information you get in your life from within, you have to really get quiet and listen. And I've been listening. And the very one of the very first things that came up was, I think I want to make another record. I think I want to sing. Uh, and uh, and the next thought was also I, I have I've inherited my grandfather's fiddle and his banjo. Hey. And I I. He was always so proud of me that I went into music professionally. And mm -hmm. He had 14 kids, and none of them went into music professionally. So when I did, he was so proud of that. And, and I just have felt his presence through this whole record. I really have. And uh, I thought, whatever I do with this record, the voices of his banjo and his fiddle have to be on this record somehow, some way. And that, we accomplished that. So I'm, I'm really proud of that. There's a song on the record called Grandpa Kirby Running the Hounds. And that song was written by John Mock. It's it's an instrumental on the record, mm -hmm. and it was written on my grandfather's banjo. And, and the intro of the song, Stuart Duncan is playing my grandfather's fiddle, and John Mock is playing his banjo. Oh. There's this scratchy record sound on the beginning of the, the recording of that song, and then it morphs into Stuart Duncan playing his fiddle and John playing his banjo. But I want I accomplished that. But that really began to really shape kind of the acoustic, earthy nature of the record. It's earthy and acoustic, and it also has strings on like half the record, too. Now, what's going to be the difference that your fans are going to notice between the older hits that you've got, um, back like Mirage, stuff like that, to the stuff now? What are they going to notice that's different, and why are they going to like what you've got coming out now? I think people that liked my music in the 80s are going to love this record, because like them, like me, we've all been growing up <laughs> since mm. those days. And I know this record and this music resonates so strongly with me, and it's such a true and genuine expression of my viewpoint on life and where I am and how I see things and how I see relationships and how I, how I value family and how I value my family roots and how I see and have really more firmly connected the dots between my musical ancestry in, in my grandfather Kirby's line of the family and and all that it's it's like there's more of a foundation under me as I made this record than if any record that I've ever made so I feel like the fans that loved if you loved what I did in the 80s I think you're gonna even love this even more because it's so alive and real well, that's one of the things I loved about your music then. The stuff that you've got now that I've heard is awesome. The stuff back then, too, was awesome because it was one of those first crossover things where you couldn't really point it and say, well, this is only country. This is goes back and forth between rock and country and folk, etc. Mm -hmm. Now, the break that you took in spreading out your talents, has that added to your creative ability? Great question. This break that I've taken... Uh, from being so much in the public eye, I, I feel like his, the, the coaching work that I've done during that time, I went to California at the, to the Hudson Institute of Santa Barbara and I got my certification as a life and career coach. 
and I've been literally in thousands of conversations over the intervening years listening to people's stories and I love story and and that's really the core and the backbone backbone of the music that I do is telling stories and um, so I believe that the work that I've done with people in deeply listening not just to the words but between the words and underneath the words to what people are expressing has really informed me as a songwriter because as I was listening to these for instance the six melodies on the, on the record five of them uh, I wrote lyrics or co-wrote lyrics to on the record I had to listen very deeply to the music that John Mock wrote mm -hmm. to the, those melodies and, and really intuit what is this melody what is it about what's the feeling wafting off of it what's it about and I think the work I've done as a coach has helped me be a better listener so I think it's made me a better writer so in um, approaching people with your music has the technology that's out there today compared to back then because back then you had just like a couple of companies that you had to go through and then if you couldn't please them after they whittled down all the songs mm -hmm. does it make it easier now to hit your target and say to the fans I know you guys been waiting for this here this is does mm -hmm. technology make that easier Technology is really making it easier for, for artists who on big labels or not on big labels, mm -hmm. you know, like myself who's independently recording. Uh, technology is a big help in being able to get this music back out there to people directly to the fans. There's without the middle people, mm -hmm. so many middle people involved. Now, it takes a lot of middle people, and I do appreciate all the people that work together to get the word out that there is music out there. But it's it's uh, we're all learning the ropes together. Is what it feels yeah. like. I'd you know with, whether you're a big label or a small label, recording independently or not. It's we're all learning how to use social media. We're all learning how how's and all for the sake of how do we connect this music with people who are going to really enjoy it and love it. And and you know I um, the technology helps do that. But you know from my standpoint of making the music, I wasn't trying to fit this into any kind of genre or uh, it is just this is what I want to say these are the music the, the melodies that I love this is, it, it was just so organic and so I it's there's a lot of trust involved a lot of kind of a sense of faith that if there was a beautiful creative spirit that came through us all that came together to make this project and are excited about it that same creative muse and, and energy is going to find the people that it's going to resonate with. So I'm trusting that process. So the writing doesn't stop when you stop writing the song. That cre same creative energy is going to help get this record out there to people who will really enjoy it. Do you enjoy showing people that are um, like in the generation right now, the younger kids, they hear your music, they enjoy it, and it's like a revelation to them. Like, yeah. Where did this come from? You, is that, that's a good feeling. It is a good feeling. And you owe, that's a good question. Where does this music come from? It, there really is a mystery. It's a deep mystery, and it's what keeps you, it, what's, it, what keeps it all alive, is you, you don't know where these songs come from, really. Mm. I mean, you sit, like, on, for instance, the, the song on the very end of the record called Do Not Cry For Me, John Mock wrote the melody. He sent it to me. I sat and cried for like two hours while I listened inside me and hear this voice that says write down everything you hear and I did and at the end of that two hours a song the lyric was written to this melody it's a mystery how did that happen I don't know but it's it was a beautiful experience to be a part of and I'm eager to share that with people well the people that you were designing this whole record with and writing the songs with what was it like to get there? Because you've got all these people with creative energy of a nuclear reactor, practically. <laughs> I mean, what was that like? Well, I was, I am so blessed to have written and uh, recorded this music with so many talented people. Tom Schuyler, who, you know, has written so many hit songs, 16th Avenue, for yeah. one, that Lacey J. Dalton had such a big hit on a few years back, and, and he's written many more songs than that. Um, Bobby Tomberlin, I've, I've co-written four of the songs on the record with him, and he wrote One More Day for Diamond Rio, and on and on and on. He just had a recording by Barbara Streisand I mean, and Blake Shelton. Together they did a duet on her duets album. So I, I, first of all, I was very humbled to be writing with these people that are just people I so admire and their abilities. And then to come together in the present moment and, and just create with them is... It, I just feel so so blessed 
to be doing what I do in this world. It's, it's just incredible. And it is a mystery. And I think we would all agree that how it all kind of gels and comes together. You're just watching it emerge. It's, it's a beautiful process. Now, this is going to be a tough question, but what is your favorite song off the album, or is that impossible? You know, I wouldn't say that I have a favorite, I love them all, but if you ask me what is the core song on this record, there's probably two, two songs that are like the core songs. Of course, the record is called It's All in the Family. There's a song on the record called All in the Family. That song, to me, is a core piece of the fabric of this record and it's really about what family's made of. It's an exploration as a grandmother sits with her granddaughter who's about to get married, showing her an old photo album, here's your grandfather and me, and going through all the, the photos and telling the story of the family lineage in a sense of here's you know, here's a boy you'll never meet, you know, and why. And mm -hmm. it's it's just so compelling. I think that song really says it well. And all the other songs are like the satellites off of that that spoke that 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 hub of the, the all the other songs are kind of spokes off of that hub. Uh, the other song is "Every Time a Train Goes By," which is a personal story of, that happened to me when I was three years old. Lived in a trailer park in Kokomo, Indiana, called Tall Timbers Trailer Park. Our trailer was right on the corner lot, right by the train track. And when that train would come by every day, it would just rattle and shake everything in the cupboards. And if I was outside playing, I would run and hide under the trailer. And I was, I was so thrilled to actually get to tell that story in song because I, one day, three years old, mind you, I am hiding under the trailer and I hear the train coming and I'm scared to death. And as I'm under there hiding, the thought wafts up. You know, every day I hear this loud, thunderous noise, and but when I, after it goes away and I walk back out, everything looks exactly the same. And that began to intrigue me, like, everything looks the same. So the next time the train went by, I stood there and just planted my feet and said, I'm, I'm going to just face this train and see what happens. And as the train approaches, and I mean, literally, this, the, the ground is shaking under my feet, and I'm just every impulse of my body says run run and I didn't and right as that train engine gets right by me out of the cab of the engine leans the conductor with his hat little striped hat and everything and waves and smiles at me it changed my life in an instant what was so fearful and scary awful became joyful and fun and something I looked forward to every day. So that has become a theme through my life and probably is a part of why I was also drawn to coaching. It's helping people face the things that they're scared, that are maybe afraid to do, talking through it, understanding it, appreciating the fear, and seeing if there might be something beautiful in there that we can bring forward with us. Yeah, because the imagination of what you think is as bad is never really as reality. Yes, and who knows? I mean, you may get this beautiful surprise yeah. out of the most painful things in our lives. Well, that's a great analogy. <laughs> I'm glad we yeah. brought that up. Yeah. Well, now let me ask you, um, it's on the family. Uh, why should one of your fans go out and buy this album mm. or see one of your shows? Well, I hear a lot of talk these days that people are saying, I wish country radio would play country music or you know complaints like that and I'm, I'm not saying I agree with that totally there's always at any time in in the history of music there's always people that don't like what's on the radio and people that do like what's on the radio and I'm not judging in any way but I will say that this record is a beautiful mix of today modern it feels very present time but it also pays homage to history, family mm -hmm. history, country music history. There's, you know, the sounds of all these beautiful instruments like banjo and mandolin and concertina and, and acoustic guitar and fiddle, Stuart Duncan on the fiddle. And uh, it's, it's just, um, it's a beautiful mix of those things. And I think if you long to hear music that has personal meaning or that is fun and, and that feels very alive, you're gonna like this record. That's why you will wanna go out and buy it. And you can buy it if you go online and uh, go to sylviamusic.com. That's my, my uh, website, and it will take you to these other portals where you can buy it through iTunes or Spotify or cdbaby.com. So that's how you can get it.